It's Sunday, which means it's recap time here on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast. The theme this week was fortify your data and protect yourself from cybercrime. In case you missed any of the episodes, I talked about applying the 80-20 rule to preventing cyber fraud. 20% of the steps that you take, the things that you can do can prevent 80% of the outcome. So that's a great way to start to prevent yourself from getting overwhelmed because there are a lot of things that you should and could do, but we want to focus first on the things that are going to have the most impact and prevent fraudsters from getting access to your information and wreaking havoc in your financial life, your identity, et cetera. And then I talked about one of the most important steps that you can take when there is a massive data breach like there was earlier this month. Well, actually it happened months ago, but it just came to light last month. But that is if there's a big data breach, your information's out there. One of the best things that you can do right off the bat is freezing your credit Closely monitoring your credit, closely monitoring your financial account activity. So bank account transactions, credit card transactions. The closer you monitor these things, especially if you have a freeze on your credit, prevents people from opening new things, but it's not going to prevent everything. So we want to closely monitor everything. And then I talked about three practical steps you can take to prevent cybercrime. A lot of this has to do with good password hygiene. Being cautious about the information that you voluntarily put out there online through social media and other ways. And then I talked about three more practical steps that you can take to prevent cybercrime. That's things like using a VPN, installing security software, et cetera. And then yesterday I closed with what to do next if you become a victim of cyber theft, identitytheft.gov. Is a great place to start. It gives you resources on what to do for a variety of different types of fraud or certain accounts. Everything from what to do if your checking account was hacked to somebody opened, <laughs> got cable in your name to what to do if someone has filed bankruptcy in your name. Yay! That sounds fun to deal with. All right. The most important takeaway from this week is that You cannot prevent the 3 billion data points that were leaked in a cyber attack or in these data leaks that happen in these breaches that happen online, but you can try to stop thieves in their tracks by preventing them from gaining further access to your accounts. So it's one thing to have your social security number or your address and your name, but it's another thing to have your password to have your username, to be able to gain access to your accounts. So unfortunately, we just live in an age now where you can't afford to not be closely monitoring all of your accounts. So consolidating, simplifying your life, having checks in place, making sure that on a regular basis, at least monthly, but probably more often, you have a process in place to go in and monitor the transactions and the activity in various accounts. And you can prevent a lot of the the problems too by freezing your credit and that prevents people from opening new credit cards and, and new credit and new accounts in your name as well. So tomorrow I'm starting a brand new theme, the best investment accounts for grandchildren. I had a client reach out to me the other day and and she has a new grandchild and they were asking like, what can we do? What should we do to help this grandchild to save and invest and get them started right? And so I'll talk about that. There's a lot of tax efficient vehicles out there. There's a lot of pros and cons though to each of them. So I'm going to talk about those next week and help steer you in the right direction if you're at a stage in life where you're starting to have grandchildren and you want to give them a leg up financially in life. We'll talk more about that. All right. Thank you so much for listening this week. If you're enjoying the podcast, please share the show and hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening. And if you're interested in learning more about working with me, you can check out my website, truenorthra.com, and you can schedule a 15 minute call with me there to talk about whatever is on your mind related to retirement. Thank you so much for sharing the love and spreading the word. I hope you have a blessed Sunday. My name is Ashley Michike, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.